and we love it for games like this. Finally, we get to some of the matchups on Friday and especially on Saturday that are really made for TV, kind of like made for March type games. Oh, North Carolina, Kansas at Fog Allen Fieldhouse coming on a Friday night here. The Jayhawks, a seven and a half point favorite. The total is 160 in this game. Uh, both of them easy wins back on Monday night. Plenty of time to rest up. Kansas gets the game at home. Jeff Nadu, I'm right back to you. Handicap away a little bit here on this one tonight. Rock Chalk and the Heels. Yeah, I, I don't understand this number at all. Um, I, look, I can understand. Look, Kansas is really good, but, I mean, so is North Carolina. I, I don't really look at Kansas and say, I think you're absolutely going to dominate the glass. That's how Elon play, stayed in that game. They dominated on the glass. They did a nice job of hanging in. But Kansas, uh, I don't think they're an overly great rebounding team. Dickinson's more of a perimeter guy. He just won't stay uh, down low a lot of the time. I look at North Carolina. Look, they're going to miss Baycott. That's just the truth. They've got to find someone that can take the role of Baycott. Is it Jalen Washington? Maybe long term. I don't know if it is right now. That could be a problem where North Carolina could be exploited here. But at no other spot on the court do I think Kansas is seven points better. Uh, I don't know. I'd make this number four, five. Did the line move or has yes, the line came, basically been there? Came down from eight and a half. Sharp Money took uh, Carolina here, and I would too. I also love these games generally over the total. I mean, you just have so many kids that can score. You got so many weapons on both sides. R.J. Davis is on the short list of best players in the country. He's right up there with Mark Sears as the best guard. They've got plenty of kids that have been there for a while. They're a pretty cohesive, older team. Kansas is an embarrassment of riches. I mean, they just have so much talent there. Kind of seemed to me like an 85-80 type of game. Uh, high profile, high quality, similar to like an NBA game. I lean over. I also lean in taking 7.5 for Carolina. That's a lot of points for a good Carolina group. For what it's worth, a 30-point win in the opening game for Kansas. And in terms of threes, 11 of 20 on the made threes. Uh, Dewan Harris obviously back. He didn't do a lot. He only scored six points in 22 minutes in that opening game. Corby Craig, a thought, including a very high total here of 160. Is that about where you make this number? Uh, I think this opened 158. Um, I was looking towards an over at some point. I, I don't remember. I think it was 58. Uh, at 60, still makes sense. I mean, this 163, uh, I kind of agree with Jeff. There's just so many scorers on the court. Um, the issue with the number here is like, how does North Carolina win this game? I think it's stopped Dickinson. I uh, don't think that's that big of a, a shock. And, and do they have the pieces to do it? I'm not sure. So I made this six and a half, which even when I saw it, I was like, ooh, that's, I fully agree. These teams aren't like that far in talent so it's like it's a full scheme thing uh, the one thing i will say about kansas and, and a guy that i'm really excited watching this team david colt david colt comes from northern illinois who i think he shot let's see 272 threes last year at northern illinois Ooh. where he was being guarded pretty good like, i mean it's fairly obvious that he's the leading scorer of that team uh this team there's a, a hundred pieces. You have Dickinson Mayo, uh, Dewan Harris, KJ Adams. Like, he is the last guy you're worried about sitting in the corner uh, ready to shoot threes. We saw North Carolina give up, I believe it was 10 threes to a guy on Elon. He didn't hit, but like they have issues in this like help defense over to the corner. They will give up threes. Like, it's one of the things that they're fine with. If, if you could find, you're not going to be able to find, but since this is such a big matchup, if you could find like David Colt player props, I would imagine that he's going to get as many looks as he wants, because if that's how Kansas wins this game, North Carolina would love that. Um, so David Colt should be a breakout game. I think he's going to get a lot of reps. Um, and if he's hitting, the over looks even better. So I made 163 would lean towards an over. Uh, did not bet it, though. Again, for Elon, they didn't have a player that made 10. They made 13, though, as a team. As Jeff was alluding to, they scored 76 points on North Carolina in the opening game in Chapel Hill. The heels had Elliot Cadeau also had 17 in the game, and he made three threes. I think, um, Let's see. This is going to be a lot of attention on this, Jeff Nadu, tonight for yeah. North Carolina and Kansas as an early season game. I think one thing that Hubert Davis lacked considerably is he did not address the loss of Armando Baycott. I don't know why, um, especially due to the fact that for years, North Carolina has been a proverbial top 10 offensive rebounding team. They really live on the glass. Baycott was so good for so long, and 
you know, you just didn't replace him. You could have went out in the transfer market and, and grabbed, uh, you know, not, even like a John Hughley type, a guy who was at Pitt or, or Oklahoma, someone like that. I just don't know if this this group up front is good at all. Uh, and, and you look at the guys they have. Jalen Withers is 6'9". Hunter Dickens is 7'2", right? I mean, I, I don't know if they have an answer for that. But that said, it, maybe you just let Dickinson do his thing and just try to protect it against everybody else. Um, that could keep you in the game, too. So, yeah, he should have did that, but Hubert Davis did not address that in the portal. Two of the most storied programs in college basketball. We gave you some good thoughts there on North Carolina and Kansas. Is that maybe a March preview for down the road? That is tonight in Lawrence, 7 Eastern time on ESPN2 if you're interested in watching. I do, I do find it fascinating. We keep talking about this, that ESPN has so much control over college sports. It's hilarious on game times, when are people playing. You look at the number of games tonight that are before 7 Eastern time, it's because ESPN is dictating to all of these different schools, you need to be playing before that Duke-North Carolina game tonight. Like I'm looking at Temple Monmouth, uh, like, like all the games in the Metro Atlantic uh, teams tonight are all at 6 Eastern time. St. Peter's, Love UMass out. Lowell. Stay, uh, Samford Cornell, IU Indianapolis Xavier, they're all they're all playing before this game tonight because ESPN is telling them all you need. Some of them are not on ESPN, but ESPN like, is telling them all you need to be playing before this game tonight. If you so want to watch a, it, just watch it then. Like, why do you need a like who? If you don't want to watch Temple Mom, then don't like just watch this game. Like, I, I don't get that. I, the NFL doesn't care about that. Just. If They're trying to, to get watch. some audience, I guess, for some of those. So there you go. Good conversation on North Carolina and Kansas.